Welcome back, everybody, to the Allegheny Health Network Nightly Sports Call. I'm Josh Taylor in for Bob Pompiani, Gene Collier from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette joining me in studio tonight. Taking your phone calls, 412 575 2600 is the number. We will start out, let's start with Will in Monroeville. Let's talk about Mark Andre Fleury. Will, you're on the Nightly Sports Call. Hello, Will. It's quiet. May not have Will. Well, you got to be a little bit faster than that. Let's go to Kirk and Harmer. Kirk, you're on the Nightly Sports Call. Kirk's quiet too. You, look, you there, Kirk? I wonder if we're having some problems with the phone system here. We can't get, seem to get some people. Let's keep it moving. We'll try Ken in Clearfield. Ken, you're on the nightly sports call. Penguin run uh, again, two years in a row. It's unbelievable. Uh, as far as the free agents go, I agree with you. I'd like to keep Benino and the Coonins. I think they'll both stay. But when you win two Stanley Cups in a row, why would anybody want to leave? Uh, thank you, and I'll listen to your. Uh, response. Ken, that's a very answer, very easy answer to that question. You know why you stay, or I should say, you know why you wouldn't want to stay after winning two Stanley Cups? Because you want to get paid more. That's what Chris Hope did after the Steelers won Super Bowl 40. He went to Tennessee and got paid. Sometimes it's what you do. When you're Chris Kunitz, and you know your role is declining. Remember, Chris Kunitz was a guy that was seeing time on the third and fourth lines at one point during the season, during the playoffs. Winning a Stanley Cup is great. Chris Kunitz has won four. He's 37 years old. He really has nothing much else to prove. But getting some extra money doesn't hurt, especially when you got kids to feed. Gene, I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, feel free to weigh in. That would be my biggest answer. Uh, as far as role and, and salary is concerned, Chris Kunis probably feels like, I mean, he's mentioned it today, he's 37 years old, but he feels like he has a lot of hockey left in him. And if you can still contribute and still have a role and maybe make more money on a team that feels like your leadership is worth something, then it's a good, maybe it's a good thing to look at. Well, I think in the case of Chris Kunitz, uh, you know, his numbers were – really way off this year you know he was as you mentioned before Josh you know up and down in the lines you know some nights you'd see him with Sidney Crosby sometimes he'd be on the fourth line he only scored nine goals in the regular season I don't know if there's a lot more money for Chris, Chris Kunitz to make out there frankly uh, Benino's another story I think Benino could make some serious money uh, money beyond what the Penguins could pay him within their situation uh, so uh, to me that's the difference between those two Still taking your phone calls, 412-575-2600 is the number. Let's go to Brad in Duncansville. Brad, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, Josh. Hi, Gene. How are hey, you? How are, How are you? you, Brad? Good. I have a penguin question and a pirate question for you. All right. Let them ring. Um, the, my penguin question is, if the, peng, if the penguins, uh, the, the flurry thing, the no trade clause? No movement, but I understand what you're saying. Okay, your question? Um. Can the Penguins trade him and get a defenseman for him, or does that mean they have to, um, or they can get anybody for him? And my pirate question—I'm sorry—and my pirate question is: um, Will the Pirates go out and get starting pitching at the deadline, or do you think they're going to go what they have? Appreciate the call. Let's do those one at a time. To answer your first question, and Gene, fill in here if, if I'm missing something. The no movement clause he had to waive in order to, uh, I believe which happened in February as was reported, in order to stay with the team so they wouldn't have to move him at the trade deadline. Now as far as the no trade goes, I believe he has 12 teams that he submits a list every year of 12 teams that he would not like to be traded to. So it probably comes down to whether or not it's one of those 12. If it's one of those 12 teams, then I believe he would have to sign off for it for the trade to happen. Am I correct, correct. on that? Correct. So I believe that answers your first question. The second question, it probably depends on where they are in the standings, honestly. I think they're, what, six games under to 30 and 36 right now, even though they're, I think they're four games back in the division. If, we're, if they, say, the, the situation looks the same way it does in a month, my guess would be no. My guess would be they're not going to buy for selling pitching. My guess would be they're probably going to sell and try to restock and try to reload and try to rebuild. But, Gene, I, I guess the, the bigger part of it is not even necessarily from the record standpoint. We're looking at a really bad National League Central. The Cubs are coming into this series for the weekend, and the Cubs have been struggling back and forth. They really oh, yeah. got, got taken Under to the woodshed by Colorado. They had the back and forth series with the Mets, so it's not like it's been an easy series for, for Chicago. So when you have the division the way it is, technically they're not ever really out of it mathematically when you look at games behind the division because the rest of the division is struggling as well. Yeah, I think the answer to the question uh, whether or not <clears throat> whether they'll add starting pitching this is just another version of your answer, uh, Josh. You said it depends on, you know, where they are in the race. But I'll say it depends more directly 
on how their starting pitchers are doing at the time. Of course, that'll be reflected in where they are in the race. But it'll, it'll depend on how comfortable they are with Garrett Cole at the time, for example. Garrett Cole pitched fine the other night. He's pitched terrible for a month. Uh, and you, know, you can say that about a lot of people in their starting rotation other than Yvonne Nova, who's pitched pretty well the whole season. But it depends on how they feel about their starting pitching, uh, you know, the second, third week in July. Taking your tweets as well, at Josh Taylor HD, Jason asks, has a Pirates question. He says, do you think there's any chance the Pirates deal Rivero, and Felipe Rivero, at the trade deadline? The answer to that question is no. Felipe Rivero is cheap, and he's pre-arbitration. He's probably one of the cheapest pieces available in this team right now. You don't move a guy that's cheap and controllable. It just makes no sense. He may have value, but for right now, when he's making less than what? Less than six hundred, less than $650,000? There's no reason to move a guy that's that cheap, and you can actually get more out of him. Go back to the Harper. phone lines. <laughs> exactly. Back to the phone lines. 412-575-2600. Let's try Kirk and Harmer again. Kirk, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, guys. There you go. How are you, Kirk? All right. Hey, Gene, of all the sports writers, man, you're my favorite. You're the funniest. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so listen, I, I would like to thank the Pittsburgh Penguins for a wonderfully exciting and hard-fought season that resulted in the championship. But I'd in particular like to thank Mario and, and Rutherford and David Morehouse for keeping both of these goalies because if they were to succumb to the pressure early in the season to trade one, we wouldn't have made the playoffs, let alone won the championship. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Ken, appreciate the call. And you know who else is pretty convinced of that? Jim Rutherford. He had been convinced of that the entire season. He came into the season saying that he wanted to keep both goaltenders for as long as he possibly could. And the main reason why is that you're probably going to need more than one goaltender during the course of an 82-game season and a deep playoff run that might last you two months. And guess what? He was 100 percent right about that. He needed both of these guys at different times. He had injury issues with each of these guys. Matt Murray tears his hamstring before game one of the, uh, the uh, I believe it was the Columbus series. So Mark andre Fleury steps in, has two great series against Columbus and Washington. So to have that entire dynamic gene turn out the way it did, that, that's another feather in Jim Rutherford's cap. We just talked about all the things that he had done right. That's another thing that he handled perfectly. Just think of how rare that situation is, Josh. I mean, the Penguins playing hockey for 50 years, they produced three. They produced three Stanley Cup-winning goaltenders. Two of them were in the room at the same time. That's, That's so not cool. a situation that you want to, you know, change. That's it's definitely it's a it's a it's a gluttony. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's an embarrassment of riches, right. and it, it's a good problem to have. The one thing, if I could pick one thing from this season that I would never understand, is why there had to be a team Murray and a team Flurry. It's like a really bad extension of Twilight. It did not have to be that way. You had two number one goaltenders. You were good either way. You had depth either way. The thing that made this team great from top to bottom was its depth, and it played itself out throughout the course of the season without question. Back to the phone lines here. Let's go to Chris in Brookline. Chris, you're on the nightly sports call. You were good either way. You had depth either way. The thing that made you there, Chris? This team great yeah. What you got for me? Was its depth, and so, it played itself out throughout can you turn your TV down a little bit? Without question. Back to the phone if you don't mind. Here, but uh, yeah. in the meantime, what's your question? So, when the Penguins had uh, Mark on, when the Penguins had uh, Matt Murray coming in for for Matt Fleur, for for Mark Andre Fleury, okay. for Mark Andre Fleury, who's just going to be the backup this year that we know that like can take over? The backup for this season, assuming Mark Andre Fleury is indeed gone, is going to be Tristan Jari, and that's something that a lot of people are not going to like, and for the main reason why is because. They don't know much about Tristan Jari because he's been in Wilkesbury for the majority of it all. But then Matt Murray's injury happened. They had the rest of the guys up from Wilkesbury. They had the, the Black Knights, if you will, the guys that they were practice against and scrimmage against. Tristan Jari was one of those guys. Jim Rutherford has a very strong confidence in Tristan Jari that he can become at least a good backup for this team, especially in the future. So as, as confident as he felt going into this season with both goaltenders, he feels very confident with Tristan Jari as well as a backup. But, Gene, I, had to have, I have to get your opinion on this because knowing you're going from Flurry and Murray to now Murray and Jari, it now changes the dynamic. So if Matt Murray gets injured, you're not going to have the same kind of play to expect from Marc-Andre Fleury. There's going to be a drop-off there. Well, there is, and you have to really be careful with Tristan because – you know, he, has, he is so inexperienced. Mike Sullivan will be really careful in laying out, uh, you know, a schedule for him to play. You know, I'm sure he'll start slow once every two or three weeks and, you know, try and work him in. 
you know, in uh, spots on the schedule where there are successive games, that kind of thing. I think you'll go really slow with him, and, you know, uh, I think that's the way to do it. Taking a break, we come back. We're answering more calls. We're answering more tweets on the nightly sports call. Stay with us.